in your future, that is where you belong. You will pastor one of the greatest youth ministries of people in their 20s, 30s, and mid 40s that people have seen in a long time. Even folk that lead you, some will be jealous of your gift, of your presence, of your power. Face them, you don't have to face me and then I'll turn. I want you to let God bring 12 songs into your spirit so you can get this out the way. I want you to do a worship project that will just shut the kingdom of hell down. Then I want you to get ready for what he birthed you to do. Your birth could have killed your mama, but God's hand was on you even that day, saith the Lord. Now, I don't touch people, but I'm going to touch you because something's going on and the devil does not want you to be encouraged. I won't admit what it is, but God says it will end. It will end. Now, don't get mad. I'm not talking to anyone specifically, but you up front that doubt this, you need to change your seat. Because that's why your whole ministry is getting lazy because you're missing the days of the prophetic not the gift in the last day say of Lord your sons and daughters so if you don't have that in your ministry you're gonna miss the last day shift you are not the only one with a word because we're the pastor the gifts are sitting in your church believe it or not Bravis, I'm going through what you're going through right now. I don't even have a name for it. I don't understand why I'm feeling what I'm feeling and why it just feels like I've done so much, but I've gotten so little. You don't take me wrong. You still married. I'm asked God as a favor to give y'all a new home again. This time, nothing from yesterday can go with you into this address. You sang me happy my whole ride here. I got strength listening to you minister. I've been watching since prayer. Prayer started before seven o'clock. I listened on my friend's phone then I watched my own but when the voice came I said who's that I needed that strength I was coughing I was tired I was weak so you need to know that God owes you some strength back and let me tell you son that's what I feel like calling you when I lay hands on people things change cuz I don't touch many people nowhere in the world I let the pastors of that church touch people but elevate your hands from one prophet to another. And I touch this young man, all of you that believe in miracles, you to scream praises unto God for his future. Do it now in Jesus' name. And I want you to... Last thing I want to say before I go into text. Hallelujah. Leave him right there. Don't move nobody. He can move when he's ready. I'm old school. When God, listen, once God gets you, don't mess with me. It's 
especially when it's a man, how many men you know worship that long? I won't prophesy to these people, but if I say these two names and you're in here, you need to jump a screen for yourself and praise God as if your life shifted immediately. Last name is White. I hear White more than three Whites, but only one screen. Next name is Dixon. Dixon. One has on a mask. Let me see your face. Okay. Uh, in the white shirt glasses, you're a male. What's your last name? Dixon? Yeah. Hmm. Somebody in the front is asking a question, so let me answer it. Because because you're not saying it loud. You're saying, I'm really not moved by these gifts because everybody's doing it now and most of them are false. I'm, gonna, I'm going to address that, but not to protect me. I've been doing this 40 years, so I ain't a part of that group. I ain't from Africa, I'm from Brooklyn. But then you're saying Jesus never used that gift. I heard you. So let me say this and I'll leave this alone for 10 folk who will scream. And God asks one brother, he says, go get thy brother Andrew. He sitteth under the tree. Oh, I don't hear you talking now. He He knew his name and his location. Yeah, all right. Well, we'll let you go. That gift is not for us. It doesn't stop you from doing right or wrong. It's to increase your faith to make you get excited that God called me by my name. Let me tell you for more screamers. Abraham would have killed Isaac if God didn't say Abraham, Abraham. Because there could be three Dixons in here, but you got to know which Dixon God's calling. Then y'all say, okay, I get it. Man, God's been using this gift since day one. One screamer will scream after and you'll start being debt free. When he said, Adam, where art thou? Now I know y'all think. And when God calls your name, he's calling you out of something. It's not to excite you, it's to get you out of something. How old are you? How old are you? I want to say to you that I don't know how this is going to happen for you. I saw you in the hallway and the Lord says, I will number one at her age, I'll repair her credit history. I will make her not feel like she's had a nervous breakdown for not being able to accomplish some things. Tell her I'm going to give her her own place, but there cannot be a roommate of a special person. Tell her I will open up a door if she wants it for her education or for her to go fully into business. Tell her the choice and you're getting a new place to live, three bedrooms while I'm talking to you. And God says, tell him, consider a little while he may have to live in two states. You may not just be where you're living, you may have to fly back and forth because God said the way I'm going to help him is to separate him from a few friends. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to make both of these Dixons busy. 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 You're going to be a prophet too. I'm going to lay hands on you. I'm going to let Mother Turgeson lay hands on her. But I'm going to lay hands on you only because a little bit of what I have can stir up a lot of what's laying in you. When I see you again, I don't care when it is, I want to see God's glory functioning.
in your life. Uh oh, Shabbat. Apostle Tugerson, after you see me reach my hand, reach yours. Where, where's your family? Who? Who's the oldest? Who's your oldest relative? Who's related to this Dixon that's hiding? Y'all don't want to claim her? Who said I am? Come out. Whichever one said I am who God's about to give new keys to, come to me. This is the one, if you listen, going to keep you straight. You didn't want this one to come out. You wanted the one over there that ain't over there no more. If you learn to listen, you're going to go all over the world. You won't have to worry about your family, who's jealous, who's telling you what to do, because you'll be going all over the world. But you've got to listen to someone like this. What's your first name? Because I can't pronounce it. Edna, spell it for me. E-D-N-A. Somebody else in y'all's family is, is a Dixon, and that name is spelled weird. E-L-I-U-L-E. Your sister. Oh, okay. All right. Listen. Because I ain't got time to do no spelling. I, I'm, I went to Africa. I had to spell every name. That's why I ain't going back. She's, she's going to lay hands on your niece. God's going to give you oversight of her, but God said, because you actually love your family and some don't listen, he's moving you into a new house. Even though he's blessed you, you're going to be able to live in one and rent another. Because God says, your retirement is smiling at you. Young, and somebody ought to shout hallelujah. All right, at the count of three, y'all will look in this direction. You will clap for them. And Mike Murdoch, one of the wisest uh, co 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 Caucasian voices of wisdom, I, I don't steal people's sayings. I let you know where I get them from. I like that man. He said, what you make happen for others. Yeah, y'all didn't make that up. I know y'all using it, but y'all know we didn't make that up, right? What you make happen for what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. You've been married before, yes or no? And you're not married now? I just saw a new gown come out the ceiling. The Lord said, you kept saying no for five, six years. God said, the gown's coming out the ceiling. That's how you're getting the new house. Y'all ain't talking. You're going to rent yours, live in his. But let me get here. Then I need 35 minutes to preach. When I lay hands on this young man, what's your full name? Malcolm Dixon. You will remember me as you get older. Hopefully I'm still alive. I want to see the glory of God on your life. Hey, now that other man named Aaron, did he leave? It's all right. He should have stayed in. Just somebody run and ask him, did he ever go to school? Because I see him like an associate pastor Aaron needs you to remember because others think because they do something better that they should have the position something about a school called Shaw University oh yeah yeah well he went there okay all right hand lifted point this way when we Touch these two lovely creations of the Almighty God. La broskete sapranda. I tell my church, don't hear me speak in tongues a lot. I only speak at home normally. We will see all the shackles break, all the feathers fall off, all the potential smile at them. Success will be upon them for the next few years. 
when y'all scream, if you have children that are bound, God said, I'm gonna free your children also. Do it now in Jesus' name. In the name of Right, you may be seated. Get your Bibles. The rest of you will be prophesied to, hear me, through the scripture. I promise you. You will not regret that I didn't call you out. Heaven and earth shall pass away. Y'all promise y'all would talk to me, but my word. I just wanted to know whether you ever went to a school called Shaw University. Did you go or you didn't? He, he, he came here not to talk to me again. I, I'm listening. I'm, I ain't never seen a big, bold man cry like that. That man in God is romancing for real. He can't go but up from here. I don't hear nobody. He can't help it. Young lady with the camera, how old are you? 23. So did you go to school? Did you fully finish? If I told you that before the turn of the next year or two that it's going to take a miracle, but that all of your student debt is paid off, would you believe me? You're number 105 on the Biden's list. I'm trying to tell you. And this is the second round that is supposed to be uh, denied. You're about to be blessed beyond measure. Who is that? Because you act like you know her. She's a part of the youth ministry. What do you want to be in life? I don't know. I don't want to be in life. What do you want to be in life? An entrepreneur? Because when you're holding the camera, now, don't take this wrong. I see you doing that. It's like a hobby, but I don't see that as your career. Your career is so profound that it's going to almost be able to get all of your relatives out of debt. If they understand what you went through from nine years old, I don't hear nobody. You all don't have to believe it, only the recipient. Just look at somebody and tell them these powerful words, it shall come to pass. You that are from old school church, just make it simple. Tell them while you're trying to figure it out, the Lord has already worked it out. And you that are prophetic, say it in three words, it is done. Say it with power, look the person in the face, and just tell them it is done. The book of First Samuel, the book of First Samuel. I have an early flight to catch in the morning, going to the Dream Center for Pilgrim, and then Sunday morning at New, new Birth for Dr. Paul Bryant, and we'll go from there. Now, I don't want to preach this if y'all going to stay quiet on me.
I don't care. When you get older, you want to be appreciated. You get your screams when you get up here. I want all mine. I'm going to try to preach like a Methodist pastor because then I can make it home in time to get some sleep. I'm already exhausted from the prophetic outpour because some of you claim you're prophetic, but you don't know until you feel what it actually does to you and to your physical bodies. It's draining. Oh! I know what I forgot to say. And let me say this, and I have no names. I'm not saying it about any specific person, but there's a hard prophetic wind in the earth. And let me talk to folk who are bold now. The problem I have is the world doesn't know the difference in prediction, premonition, and prophecy, right? I won't even talk about it. Most of the folk that are out here prophesying have strong gifts of discernment. But here's what I want to say, because somebody has spoken about uh, the glitch in Microsoft. Someone spoke about the new move of God that's coming upon the earth. And I've seen a lot of people, some, very few I know, but a lot that I see as I travel that are very excited about accurate prophecies. And let me say this, because you don't know the difference in prediction and premonition, but let me say this, Prophet Terry, and if three folk jump, I'll be happy. I don't mind the person prophesying being right, but hear this. Some of you are screaming, hear me, over people you don't know, but won't scream over the folk you have, right? That's because you don't even know the character of the stranger, right? But remember I said this, and you'll hear about it in 2025. So that means this 24. Ten folk catch this, you will hear it. You're hearing accurate prophecies like fresh water out of a dirty glass. If you knew somebody spit in that glass and you were thirsty for water, you would not have drank it. And most folk are becoming highly gifted at the expense of no character at all. No one's perfect, but these folk with gifts don't want to be right at all. When you are truly chosen of God for a screamer who wouldn't jump, you are hard on yourself because you know the gift you have, you don't deserve it because you can never measure up. Oh, I don't hear nobody to the level or the magnitude of that grace. The world has been drinking for the past 10 years. They've been drinking fresh water out of dirty glasses. But let me do this. Now, Lord, the 20 or 30 people that talk to me for the next 35 minutes, do them a favor and give them something mind-blowing. Whatever you choose to do, let thy will be done. Supersede and transcend any prayer or any desire or request that they've ever asked you for. Do that which is exceeding abundantly above all. In Jesus name. First Samuel chapter 1 beginning at verse 4. Beginning at verse 4. I sent some prophetic junkies. They still pulling. You know y'all got a lot of. Uh palm readers down the block y'all got a lot of them all you got to do let me give you
give you the backdrop of this because you said you would talk to me while I teach. And that is, this story is about a woman that you've heard a lot about, but I'm going to try to bring some more substance. Her name is Hannah. I did say this is the year of the woman, but this ain't about that. But the women should say amen. And she has some competition living in her house. Her name is Penina. For the hood's sake, we're going to call her Little Penny. Okay. <laughs> you ain't never had a name and somebody condensed your name and instead of you. Back in the old school day in this particular passage, a man could marry more than one wife as long as he could provide for them and give them what they deserve. So please think back, not 21st century. I'm teaching and you talking, 30 of you. Because in the text, there's two women for this one man and the one he loves can't produce and the one he hates is producing. Sometime God will put you in a situation of somebody else who can't stand you and you have to watch them prosper while you don't. Look at the front row, help me Lord. Because he's still saving the best for last. Your blessing is going to come from the same source, just not the same time. You could be doing what another person's doing it and doing it better and from your heart and the fake person succeed. And if I go here and you don't talk, I need to get in my car because God's not testing your calling. He's testing your character. And when you can say, Lord, I'll wait until you are ready. God says, when I do it, I'm not just going to blow your mind. I'm going to make your enemy lose their mind. Look at somebody and tell them your enemy is about to lose their mind. Now they can't lose their mind if you exit from the picture. You've got to stay in the story. But most of the time, if you have to leave the story to get blessed, we don't know if it came from God or not. So let's read from verse 4. And when the time was that Elkanah, he's the husband, he offered and gave to Penina, a little penny, his wife, and to all her sons and her daughters, which means she's producing portions. Now, if y'all don't get happy on this, I blew it. But unto Hannah, he gave a worthy portion. For he loved her. Now he didn't say he loved little Penny. Y'all ain't talking to me. Oh y'all, he did not ever say. Don't think God loves somebody more because they have more than you. Love is not based upon what we accumulate. It's based upon what we survive. I can't get help. And the road has been rough. <laughs> I'm going to stay here. And the going has been tough in the hills. Have been hard to climb, but I started out a long time ago. There's no doubt in my mind. I decided y'all finish it. Yep, I can tell we got a new age church because these young folk don't know the words of that. They only know way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, stomp. Y'all better get some of these hymns in your sanctified soul. They can't get it if y'all don't sing it. The Bible does not express that Elkanah has any love for the other wife. But he has a love for Hannah. All right, I'll read verse 6. And her adversary also provoked her sore and made her fret because, underscore this, the Lord shut up her womb. God right here for those who I'm teaching who I'll preach in about 20 minutes he's given your enemies a voice to talk and given them something to talk about 
You see how quiet you are? God is behind all of this. If I can get you to accept this, you're going to dance your way home. All the things you're going through that's even negative, God is behind all of it. It said, for we know that all things, not just good things, come on, all things work together for the good of them. You love the Lord? All right. Who love the Lord? To them who are the called, you called uh, according to his purpose. Things don't have to be good to be God. Let's go on. Things can be bad and it's still God. Y'all talking about God is good all the time and all the time? Well, let me say this to some folk from the hood who became holy who will scream, God is a bad God. He bad all the time. Look how quiet it got. And all the time, God is bad. Whether you put God or bad, good or bad on it, he's still terrific. said the Lord shut up his womb shut up her womb and as so year by year she went up to the house of the Lord they're not reading they're using the cheat sheet so she provoked her therefore she wept and she wept until she lost her appetite she didn't eat no more look at your neighbor who's close to you and tell them don't lose your appetite see that's how they know when folk are really dying they don't want to eat as long as you have an appetite, there's hope that you will live. Even if all your enemies are around, he prepares the table for you in the presence of your enemies. And the way they know you're not going to die if I didn't die in the valley is I'm hungry. Yelling, and some of y'all are in church right now only starving for prophecy, but not for purpose. And the issue is, whoever God speaks to, the devil attacks because God made you a target. That's why some of you don't need a prophecy because you don't have enough strength to make it through the problems. I can't get help to whom much is given. So Lord, before you prophesy to me, give me enough strength to endure because Satan does not want you until God talks about you. He didn't want Job's stuff. Wanted Job because God in verse 1 of Job 1 said, have you considered my sir? You're being attacked because you're in the mouth of God. Tell somebody, tell me, I've been in his mouth for five years then. I've been in his mouth for ten years. This side, this section won't talk to me. She wouldn't want to eat. Verse 8. Then Elkanah. After I read, I'll be halfway through. Elkanah, her husband to her. Uh, Elkanah, I mean, then said Elkanah, her husband to her. Hannah. What you crying for, baby? This Todd Hall version. If you can read the message Bible, you can sure let me read my Bible. Baby. What you crying for? I bought your favorite crab legs. Why you ain't eating? You letting that girl get on your nerve again? She's got my children. You got my heart. Uh-oh, I still... I'm, I'm just reading my verse. This is going to help every preacher in here who's been waiting on something. I promise. I promise. He said, why are you grieve? I'm better to you. I hope it's on the scripture somewhere around here. Than ten sons. Why them scriptures ain't on the screen? I'm better to you. Than ten sons. Which means I've got to. Divide what I give, little penny. But when I deal with you, I give you my own. And some of y'all ain't gonna scream, God ain't blessed you, but he spent a lot of time with you, though. A whole lot of time. 
You don't know your ability not to produce is making you and God converse more than you ever have. I'm going to quote another old song. Let us have a little talk with Jesus. Y'all aboard, let us tell him, oh, I got help all about our struggles. All right, you know the rest. Get a little prayer, Will Turney. I got about 17 more minutes of teaching. Yeah. I'm better than you than 10 cents. So Hannah rolls up after that she had eaten. She got her appetite back from talking to the right person. And she can only eat in a place called Shiloh. This is for 10 folk who are not addicted to prophecy, even like leaders right now. I just wish you'd have kept prophesying. That's because you don't want no word. Prophecies fail. Tongues cease. But the word of God. The word stands on its own two feet. Some of you can't make it because you want a prophecy to hold you up when you only need a word to stand on. But I'll leave that alone too. She can only eat if you're looking. Thank you, technician. She can only eat because of this for five screamers. She's in worship. Shiloh is worship. If you ever want to get your appetite back, you got to get away from gossipers and complainers and haters and get to a place where somebody's saying, Father, I stretch. I'm in verse 9, technicians. Hannah rose up early. Boy, I feel the preacher in me. After that, she conversed with the man and got her appetite back and she ate in a place called Shiloh after they had drunk mm. they we don't know what they drank but they drank see the story the Bible don't tell us don't look at me strange let me preach because the Bible don't tell you what they drank because it ain't your business See, some of y'all only look at people to see what they doing, but you don't know the reason behind. You don't know she got raped to get pregnant, whether her daddy or you know is she pregnant. And you're so nosy, you have no solution to what's trying to kill her. If you don't know how to help me deliver what I'm carrying, then don't say nothing to me. It's very important. I have learned not to be judgmental. That's my favorite side presently, even though y'all talking, guys. And that, that's my side. After they had drunk. Now, Eli the priest sat upon the seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. I'm going to see who's going to scream now because we don't know what they drank. But somebody knows that they had a drink because the scripture says they drank. And she was in bitterness of soul, prayed unto the Lord, wept sore, which meant she wasn't hurt now enough to stay home. She had enough strength to get to Shiloh. She didn't, she didn't nurse her problem at home. She said, me and the problem going to God and we going to present this to the Lord. Yeah. And she didn't care how many folks saw her when she came in. Listen, let me say this. I would love to have friends in church, but that ain't mandatory. Worship is mandatory, not friendship. And the closer you get to God, the further you may get away from people. I promise. He was in the temple of the Lord, verse 10. She was in bitterness of soul, prayed unto the Lord, wept so. Verse 11, she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, I'm almost there. If thou will indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid, remember me. Don't treat me like you don't know me. I can't get up. But will give unto me a man child. I'll give him back to you. Oh, y'all know all the days of his life 
I won't even let a razor come upon his head. What she is saying for 10 folk who missed it who won't scream is I don't want it because I need it. I want it to shut my hater's mouth. I don't even need 10 kids. All I need is one. Some of you ain't screaming because you still waiting on one opportunity. One. Others done had several chances. You've not had one. And for the three folk talking, forget ten. All you're going to need is one. <laughs> Father, help me help them. I need this one child. I won't put a razor to his head. Then it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord. Eli, her pastor, her bishop, her apostle, marked her mouth. Now I'm going to show you something you never saw and if it makes sense then maybe folk from Brooklyn and those who love me will scream because we need to learn the Bible. Because Eli is going to say, well let me read it then I'll tell you what I want to say. But he marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart. Only her lips moved but her voice was not heard. Therefore because of the way she spoke without being heard, her pastor thought she was drunk. Here's where for you better jump quick. He probably had a cheat sheet because somebody already mentioned she drunk. This is not a prediction, nor a premonition, nor a prophecy. This is nosy at best. Your rumor got to church before you did. Yelling, oh, this here? Now, if you don't start screaming louder, then we need to go home. If a rumor gets to your church, you a bad somebody. I'm telling you now. Because all rumors do is make more room. Because you are worth being lied on, talked about, mistreated. You're not going to be hanging out with that group anyway. You're going to be hiring them. Look how that went over folks' head. What in the world? God said, I'll make your enemies. You need to find out what that means. I don't have time to preach it, but you need to find out what that means. That's not a person for you to abuse and kick around and make them regret. This is for one screamer out of three, which first started off at 20 and 30. The one person yelled out, a real enemy's job in your life is not for you to get rid of them. It's for you to learn how to use them to reach what you couldn't on your own. When you step on a footstool, it elevates your reach. And some of you need about five or six. Now you got steps. You need about 12. You got a ladder. You need about 20. You got an escalator. You need about 200. You got an elevator. Y'all, you need some. I got where I am today off of the mouths of my enemies. <laughs> Last two verses. And her pastor said, put away your wine. Put away something that I didn't have. If you ever want to know whether you're really, 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 I don't know a good word for it. And, and I have an extended vocabulary that I refuse to use at times. I used it a little bit last night at Bible study. But I want to say here and keep it as simple as possible. If you really, 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 really want to know that you are chosen and you got to jump on this. You will know when you're chosen because Satan's biggest attack against you is to make who you love, be it a pastor or a mentor, believe the lie too. What do you do when who you trust with your soul is on the side? Now, I told you 20 minutes ago, all of this is orchestrated by God.
Y'all help me a little more. Please don't put the devil in scriptures that the scriptures don't put him in. There is no demon in this story. That's why most prophets need to learn to preach because most prophets that can prophesy can't preach and most preachers can't really prophesy. And if you're a prophet who can't preach, you need to get it the right way. You study to show yourself approved. Exegesis, stop preaching out of your feelings and what you see in the spirit and stick to the script. There is no devil in the story. It's weak saints when they go through hell that find the devil to blame it on. Why can't you just accept God is testing your behavior? Let me talk to talkers from this end on. I ain't gonna ask them more. And if you survive and pass this test, I'll tell you that later. Voice was not heard. Put away thy wine. Hannah answered and said to her leader respectfully, No, my Lord. She calls him Lord. Respect. No, my Lord. I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I'm about to preach. I have not drunk neither wine nor strong drink. So now we know the verse before. It, it, it may have been some water or some juice. Because if you want to know my story, ask me. Oh, it's quiet now. Yeah, I did it, but you got the wrong name. Ask me. Some of y'all look guilty. You just sitting there looking around because you do a lot of gossiping, don't you? And this also proves for a humoristic person who will scream that there is a difference in wine and liquor. Because she says, I have not drunk wine or. Look at some married couple. Thank God, baby. But I've poured out my soul before the Lord. Verse 16, 17, 18, 19. Count not thy handmaid for a daughter of Belial, which means don't name me as one of the children of the devil. For out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto, which means I believe I'm at the conclusion of speaking out of pain. Pastor, if you pray for me, this is going to be the last time you ever see a sorrowful, crying, broken person as I am. And I'm not going to put what's causing me pain out. I'm going to rejoice until pain leaves. Y'all ain't talking. I'm not going to force it. I'm just going to get myself together and make what made me uncomfortable, uncomfortable. Yep, you that talked, you got it. I'm going to go on. Eli answered her. Go in peace. The God of Israel grant you your petition that thou hast asked him. And she didn't tell him what she asked. But what she asked was for one child. A male. Look at your neighbor. Say these two words. They don't get happy. I don't care if it's your boo. I want you to not talk to them for 60 seconds. Put them on silent punishment. But tell your neighbor, be specific. Because she didn't just ask for a child. The reason why she asked for a male child for a screamer is if the husband dies, the male child takes care of her. She asked for something that would look out for her in the future. I'm sorry that you're in a lengthy Bible study right now. And she said, let thine hand may find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way. She ate. And look what it says here for screamers. Her countenance was no more sad. That season of regret and pain ended after she was misunderstood. Uh-oh, I just lost everybody again. After her character was questioned by her pastor. All of this shifted because she didn't let pain make her disrespectful. I think I'm boring the pastors. Y'all the ones that gonna need this later.
She rose up in the morning. Thank you, Minister Ferguson. She worshiped before the Lord. The next day, she had home church. I'll be back around the corner. And then she came back to their house. To Ramah. And then Elkanah saw his wife. Y'all got to read this in the message Bible. Don't put it in there. Spiritual discretion is advised. Is a vine. He knew his wife. That meant he had uh, sexual relations. Because there is no way for the last screamer, then I'm about to read my statement and fly the kite, but I want to hear how happy you get. She could not get the son without her husband's participation. God's going to make people around you help you produce after tonight. Because you've been helping them, but nobody ever came in your life to help you. There are people that's been blessed because of your presence. But now I need someone in my life to help me produce. Don't stand up unless you feel it. Don't be following nobody. The Bible says, while Elkanah was romancing Hannah this is for two screaming preachers the Lord remembered her the Lord said when he touched her tonight pregnant now maybe last time to my technicians maybe y'all forgot verse 5 go back to verse 5 maybe y'all forgot it I like that preach bishop I like this maybe somebody forgot this Dr. Mixon and all of you, my favorite side. They were always having sexual relations on a regular. But she couldn't receive because God closed that door. So all God did that night. If you don't scream it, it's God made her open to receive. Some of you can't get blessed because you're too shut down. You've been so hurt over the years that you're walking around real scared and phobic. But I prophesied a ten folk with a loud mouth by the end of August, you're going to produce. By the end of this month, you're going to receive. Y'all almost there. Be seated for the last time now. This is it. Psalm 34 verse 1. I will bless the Lord. Mm. At all times. His praise. Shakalabotoskateli. Shall continually. Be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast. Y'all ain't happy in the Lord and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together my last verse for those who will last two verses for those who will scream i sought the lord come on get it and he heard me yeah hannah had to seek him and he delivered me from all my little pennies look at somebody be humorous say this to them if they don't jump with you don't share your new money just say neighbor She's a little penny, but I'm about to be a fine dime. Y'all go on and tell them. See, people who are dime pieces, they are threat to copper pennies, right?
That's why they look at you in church, stare you up and down because they're wondering how much you paid or whether you paid it all or how can they mimic you without getting broke. Yeah, let me get out of here. And the Lord delivered him from all his fears. They looked unto him and were lightened. And y'all heard what he said about Hannah? And their faces were never again ashamed. Can I read one more verse? And y'all scream and treat me nice? This poor man cried. And the Lord heard him. Saved him. Out of all his troubles. Can I read two more verses? I'm about 15 minutes to close here. The angels of the Lord camp around about them that fear him and deliver them. Here we go. Oh, taste and see. Y'all ain't taste him. That the Lord is good. Bless is the man that trusted in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints. Here it goes, for there is no want to them that fear him. Be seated, 10 of my minutes left. I want to give you a topic and a subtopic. If I give you the topic screen, the subtopic is for educators who know how to scream. And that is, my topic is, actions speak louder than words. I'm halfway through my teaching. I taught every verse. Look at somebody and tell them, your actions shall speak louder than your words. I know you're saying, where did you get that from, Brother Todd, for three folk who would catch it? It said her mouth moved, but nothing came out of it. And what the text in 1 Samuel judged her on for a screamer was her behavior. And the reason why she was judged is her behavior looked drunk. Because she was... Her pastor looked at her behavior and said... The girl's talking to herself. She crying and quickening and leaning. One of the members came and said they saw her and her husband drinking. Oh yeah. And this girl, I wish I had nerve to come up in here under the influence. I came under the influence, but not of alcohol. I, wish I, I came under the influence knowing this is the last day I'm going home and letting somebody steal my joy because his anger endureth for a moment but in his favor there's life weeping may endure for a night a shift is coming I'm about to go to my holler a shift is coming in you for things to happen that would normally not happen. Things within you are about to line up, not things outside of you. You're waiting on things around you to fall in place. God said, it's what's going on in you. I need you to behave like you're debt free before the money comes. I need you to act like you got victory before you get victory. I want people to be confused by your behavior. They will be confused by your actions. Thank you for praying for me, son. Because I need it. It is very important that we study the text from a different sensitive area, from a different lens. Here I go because I'm speed reading now. A lot of people can't get the help they desire simply because you're not going to catch this. They won't allow people to help them in personal areas. Where Hannah needed a miracle, it was in a personal space. Uh-oh, I just... Yeah. Oh, y'all quiet now. Her miracle that was needed was in an area that not everyone could enter. 
It's called your private area. So I'm about to tell 30 folk who don't care anymore. God says, if your business get out, I'll get you productive by then. But I need to tell you, too many people have been in your private spaces. Sometimes God must allow a situation to minimize you before it ever maximizes you. Let me bring it down to common dialogue for talkers. You must get as low as you can go. And at your lowest point, the decision is twofold. Do I die or do I get back up? Tell your neighbor what your decision is. That's up to you now. Do I go under the ground or do I get back up on my feet and let the devil wish he never touched me in certain areas of my life? Certain areas are only for God. I'm talking to talkers, not you playing around. If God be for us. Hannah needed God to grant her miracle and the miracle was in a personal nature. It was that of a personal nature. She needed God to make some arrangements in her body. No need for graphics on that. You know what I'm talking about. She wants a baby and romance is not a problem and her husband loving her is not a problem. The problem is God has to open up what he shut down. Now, after this last bit of teaching, Shabbat, y'all should eat this up, whether they eat it up in Ocala or not. But I came to bless Ocala, the immersed church. Y'all have to catch this and get excited. Why didn't she get pregnant? And why would God, if he's not upset with her, shut her womb down and delay her production? You don't want to know that answer? I could take it home with me. I'll give you the answer, but if you don't go really off as if you're drunk or on crack, then we're going to miss a miracle. The reason being is that Eli had two sons, one named Hophni, one named Phineas. They slept in the Bible. They slept with all the women of that church except Hannah. The reason why they couldn't touch Hannah is she was barren. And priests can't touch barren women. So God took her off the market. Oh, good, good out of here. I want to preach. I want to preach. I want to preach. God took her off the market so that when she got pregnant, at least she knew who her baby's daddy was. And nobody could take credit because God had shut her down. What? Let me hear B flat. B flat. Thank you. What do we do for the screamer when your problem is protecting you? I to go to church. If God had not shut her down, she would have been a part of the routine. Half nine Phineas had so much influence, they slept. The Bible said they fornicated with every woman in the church. But the Bible said they could not touch because they were priests. They could not touch her. So that means when Hannah was in that church that day, Shiloh worshiping in the temple for screamers, they could only have a rumor of her being drunk, not touched. And when folk can't get you on one thing, they'll conjure up another thing. God right now. And what the lies they're telling on you is doing is keeping you away from your. See, you think they meant it for your evil. But God made certain folk believe the lie because the folk that believed it couldn't help you produce anyway. So when you get there, they can't take credit for what God does because the problem separated the promise from you. 
You want to know who's on your side? They'll be there when all hell break loose. You want to know who hates you? Let a problem come out and they'll exit your life so fast. If If the Bible says I got to go Three folk push me and encourage me. If the Bible said God shut up her womb, that meant he didn't tell her. So she does not know she's barren. She wasn't born that way. God shut it down. I'm talking to talkers. You weren't born to be broke, unemployed, living the life of a low life. That is not what God put us here for. But he wanted to show the devil, I got a group of people who can worship me at the bottom. Uh Uh-oh, you got to be able to praise God at ground zero. And you've got to have a behavior that says, I refuse to give in to what the devil's trying to do to me. And you've got to get used to haters being around you day and night. Night and day. They need something to talk about. And the best way they can get a job is to use a famous name yours your name is giving them a business that won't even give you one your name is stronger than the blogger talking about you they getting all them hits because it's your name Hophni and Phineas slept. Y'all got to read it. I didn't write it. With every woman that came in that temple. But when Hannah came in, they backed off. Because they said she can't produce anyway. Oh, she can't produce. She ain't going to never be nothing. As a matter of fact, she miserable at home. Eli, her bishop, who is also the father of these two uh, men. The Bible describes him, for one screamer, as an obese person. Uh -uh. Come on, let me talk. He's overweight. And through his behavior, he must eat a lot because he's sitting when he dies. Just that he don't have a lot of control over his sons. Because they're the ones destroying his kingdom. The only person they can't say they've touched. Is this woman who comes to the church that night. Looking inebriated. She's moving. Let me hear B flat. I'll be there. She's moving her lips. And the nosy folk are trying to read the words. She was probably saying, Lord, I love you. Lord, you're good to me. I hear somebody trying to preach over there. But a pastor. I'm talking to leaders who won't talk to me. Y'all got to start knowing your members enough to know whether they're under the influence. Or whether they're getting a breakthrough. Because I didn't scream for you preaching this Sunday. It's not that I'm not enjoying you. But I think I've got a higher power's attention right now. And pastor, I don't want you to judge my silence. Judge my behavior. Took a lot for me to get to church. To go where people don't want to see me. To shake hands with folk that don't want to touch me. To say praise the Lord to folk that hate my guts. Pastor, give me credit because I'm here.
She keeps on. Let me hear that B flat. Moving her mouth. First thing I'm going to tell you before I fly my kite for 30 folk who will preach and say amen is don't stop moving your lips. Close mouths. Even if folk don't know what you're talking about, keep on saying thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let folk laugh at you. Keep on saying glory, glory, glory. When I got saved, all I did was call Jesus for about 10... Oh, y'all didn't get saved that way. Y'all did it the cute way. Repeat after me. I am a sinner. We did it the ugly way. Call Jesus. Call him faster. And if you call Jesus... Uh oh yeah he will answer prayer tell somebody to the right and left and see whether they a hater or a participator and say neighbor if you call jesus he will answer prayer so the lady keeps on Moving her mouth. Nothing is coming out of it. But Bishop Edge, she said what she meant from her heart. From the heart, the mouth speaketh. When you begin to open your mouth, make sure pain don't speak. Make sure depression does not speak. When you open your mouth, let the devil know I had a little talk with Jesus. Uh, uh, Lord, and I told him uh, all about my struggles. Shake a neighbor's hand and shake it with aggression and say, neighbor, I heard something. I heard you pregnant. Not with a baby, but with a healing, with a business idea, with a new anointing, with a ministry from on high. Wish I had a little more volume out here. I said I heard that God is about to make something come out of your spirit that's going to intimidate all of your naysayers. But a uh, neighbor, don't wait till the battle's over. Y'all ain't preaching to your neighbor. Don't wait. Your bills are paid.
that loves me. Don't say them words, you don't. Say it with power, you don't make This should be second nature by now. Listen. Hallelujah. Uh-oh, he's here. I said hallelujah. Her actions, look at me, we're going to try it. Her action, her actions resembled to her pastor that she was drunk. Look at me, that she had put something in her system that made her act out of character. I know you don't believe me, but 10 out of hundreds or thousands of you all to scream on this. You're not getting that miracle until you act out of character. Some of you look like businessmen, not tonight. Businessmen are filing bankruptcy. Some of you don't know God's judging your miracle on how you behave while you're at your final season of sorrow, grief, frustration, weeping me. I'm going to get out of that. Endure for a night, but joy cometh. Somebody heard me and they took it, but let me say this to three preachers up front. Joy cometh is guaranteed. Weeping staying is May. May is never permanent. Because May could be May not. Y'all in. So the length of weeping stay is based on your behavior. If a child did wrong 
All the mother got to do to make that child change is says, wait till your dad comes home. And the beating is based upon how fast the child corrects their behavior. Tonight, half of us are going to praise God without music first, with hands, feet, and mouths, as if by tomorrow at 8 a.m., you will be in the presence of what you've been waiting on. Hold on. And for a third of you, you will. For the rest of you, you will be later on. Look at me. In order for you to get this miracle, you've had to have doors closed. Relationships shut down. Fully misunderstood by your family and friends. You have to feel alone. Here comes the miracle. I see some of you. I can feel it. She gets that baby. Look at me and look happy. It's a boy. Let me say it like this for 30 real screamers, loud voices. She got what she asked for. And some of you are about to get exactly. That's why I said tonight, don't open your mouth until you're sure about what you want. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. Let this be acceptable in your sight. Oh Lord, my strength, my redeemer. Anilo sebretes capatoria. I need some of you. I know. Well, this is why I am. I'm just quiet by nature. Don't be quiet by spirit. You can go back to quiet, but now you won't have to be broken quiet. Cause your sound is gonna change whether you produce or whether you remain barren. God, look at me, prophet, opens her womb without telling her. We read it by simply hearing he remembered her. I remember that this girl got accused, have to put up with mess at home with little Penny, has to be misunderstood by her pastor. And the only one that believes in her that I'm going to let touch her in private areas is Elkanah. God said, I'm going to take everybody out of your space except them that want you to produce. You're not going to pick your friends for the next few months. God says, I'm going to pick them for you. They're not going to agree with everything you say. They're not going to be from the same block, but they understand what God's purpose is in your life. Stop looking for people to have pity parties with and find somebody to have a purpose party with. Let's get blessed on purpose. Y'all, come on, let's get delivered on purpose. Let's do what we do on purpose. Now you're holding the hand of a debt free child of God. And no, I'm not going to the offering, I'm going to the praise now. I was never supposed to be as successful as I am. Not according to where I was born, not according to the church I went to as a kid, not according to the community that I come out of. Most of my friends are either dead, in, in prison, or still living in the same apartment. When I go back to New York, I can find everybody because they ain't went nowhere. When they come looking for me, they got to ask, where is it? You want to be so blessed, people can't find you. See, you didn't even clap for yourself. So I'm all right. No, 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 no. Don't clap for you now. The first you don't like you. Can I have your number? No, you cannot. You must make sure this time you protect who you let in your private space.
But you better be glad that God loved you enough that when the wrong people were in your private, you didn't produce. That's all I'm trying to tell you. You better be glad that God's grace made your problem your protection. Did that settle in your heart? All right, you're holding the person whose credit's going up 100 points. All I'm doing is throwing some seed out. And if you touch the right person, that's production. You touch the wrong person who's looking all smooth, don't touch them. You got to touch somebody that has a behavior that says, you going to make it. You going to make it. They're not jealous of what you're driving. They're not jealous of what area you're living in. They're not jealous. When life's, when life's troubles come my way, I hold my head up high and say hallelujah anyhow. 50 of you, out of all of you, you will not believe me, but I can't call names anymore or do all of that personal. This is corporate. 50 of you who scream loud on this and act a little drunk in your behavior, God said, I'm going to bless you. God says, I'm changing your address. I'm changing it. And for half of you, I'm changing your zip code. I'll take it. And for 10 of you, I'm changing your tax bracket. Old school said like this, tis no secret. My brother, what's your name? Jose, and what's your kingdom title? Pastor, you're not, no, you will believe me. You're just not going to believe that I'm the one telling you. But the Lord says, Todd, he was not investigating you. He's observant. He's tired of everybody saying they're prophets and apostles and bishops. I'm making him a gatekeeper to stop the false from being received as true. The Lord said, but tell him this, because he worshiped and moved and stood at the word that I planted in you, Tell him I've got two couples that's going to help him get 20 acres of property to do what he has to do to have a, 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 I don't hear nobody and to have influence in the kingdom of God. God says, as I promised my son Jacob, who I later call Israel, thou shalt have power with God and man. Now, I, I have never said these words in this manner, but don't take it wrong. I'm a little godly jealous because my new desire is not to travel anymore preaching the gospel. My new desire is whatever it is. Y'all hold hands. It's private. And I will only reveal it to those who will help me produce. Because if you tell it too fast, you give the witch and the warlock time to do what they do. So her mouth kept moving, but her words could not be heard. So because she's talking to no one, they have to then attack her character. Your character is being attached because they miss your communication. Hold hands, we're going. So they got to attack you because they can't talk to you. Y'all hold hands and believe that. Y'all believe what I tell you. Because your voice is similar to the voice of God. It's compassionate, it's loving, it's caring. It brings peace. There's 17 people, normally I have to count it, but the Lord's going beyond me. He said, there's 17 people tonight by 11 p.m. will be healed from cancer. 
Seven of you already know about it. The others don't even know they have it. But God says, don't worry, because by 11 o'clock, I will put my hand in your private spaces. Y'all in I hear the Holy Ghost say, your eyes have not seen. Your ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into any of our hearts the things that our God has in store for us. At the count of three, I want you to use your behavior to get your problems away now. Your problems have done what they needed to do and that was to protect you from something you didn't see coming. But now your praise is going to release you, open you up. She got opened up after she went to Shiloh. You've got 30 seconds to clap, open your mouth, scream, holler, and give God the praise. You that are watching by social media, join in if you're in a private space. If you can't yell at work, just move your lips. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. Whoa. You have 15 seconds. As you, are holding, as you are holding your neighbor's hand, I want to tell the leaders that are present tonight something. All of the bishops, all of the apostles, and the next tier group of leaders, the millennials those who might be part of the Z, alpha, Z generations in the future, I want you all to hear me. This is not exciting, but this is necessary. Look at me. Don't look to the left and right. Hannah got pregnant. She is, I'm going to see who talks to me, the reason why we have the prophetic. Her son is the first. She's the reason why we have. She gave birth to Samuel. The Lord hears me. And what she gave birth to that she gave back to him. I'm almost ready. What she gave birth to, she gave back to him in five years. Never put a razor to his head. She let God groom him. Oh, y'all. People are going to know you've been with God because the rough you is going to exit. And a better version of yourself is about to be presented. It's quiet, but I'm closing. She gave that son to Eli, to the same overweight leader. 
She put that son in the ministry where God's voice was needed. His voice is better needed in a church that's self-destructing. Y'all quiet. His voice is not needed where praise is actual. His voice is needed where complaint is made. And the Bible says the boy Samuel was asleep. Look at me. And God called him Samuel. I'm about to run home. Samuel. And the Bible says the boy, Pastor Tur Turgeson, Apostle, this going to bless all your pastors. The boy got up and ran to Eli. And he said, yes, sir, you called me. Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back to sleep. He goes back to sleep. God says, Samuel. I wish my church could catch this. The boy got up, ran to his leader. Y'all going to miss what I'm saying and said, you called me. He said, no, I did not. Then the pastor said, the next time you hear that call, say, here I am, Lord. Uh oh, hold on. Now, here's what I'm leaving my church with and all of you visitors who will scream loud. You won't have to scream loud no more unless you feel it. When God is speaking to you, you say he sounds like your leader. You don't run outside of leadership. I hear God my own way. No such biblical thing. But your leader is not intimidated to the place where they won't tell you the next time. Now that I know you're accountable, just say, here I am, Lord. Oh, y'all. Because <laughs> now I know he's speaking to you because you keep coming to me. See how you didn't catch it. We're not going to manipulate you. We're going to elevate you. God, but we have to see what spirit you're operating under. Now for the last time. Look around you before you touch somebody's hand. Change your approach and stop reaching for the closest thing to you. And try to recall how they've been acting since service began. Uh-huh. Did they praise during the service? Did they say amen while they're checking their phone? Be careful. What points of the sermon did they respond to? What points did they ignore? Because spirits are transferable. We are all spirit beings with the opportunity to live in the body with the right to being human. That's all we are. If you find someone who actually listened to the sermon tonight, God says you automatically have just become productive. Some of y'all still looking. You're like, I ain't touching nobody yet. I hope you didn't just try to make a person feel good about themselves. Because this ain't about your feelings. It's about my future. I'm Blasakoya. We're closing now. Don't let that hand go. Don't let the elbow, whatever part you were holding. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I was talking to you about 20 acres, right? And I know you receive it. Good, good. I, I just want to keep it fair and give somebody else some property. In the pink jacket. What's your name? Nick Hillary. What do you do for a living? You're a pastor. In what city? Poland? 
See, I don't know, so you got to answer me because I don't know where. You are a little um, shocked that I'm prophesying to you. But a little glad at the same time because now that you hurt me personally, I believe he's real. So you've overcome what you may have heard about me for what you've seen. That's good. I don't hold grudges. That's good. I'm going to ask God some kind of way in the near future, if you praise him and 200 folk over here do, to find a way to give you what looks like a strip mall. This strip mall will have boutiques, clothing, hair salons, a tax business. Only one thing will stay, and that is a United Parcel Service. They will be paying you enough rent to pay the mortgage for your building, and somebody ought to scream yes. I don't know you, but I respect that you got enough strength to say, I'm going to go see him. I, I, I respect that God will show me everything, but yet give me enough strength to understand you because I've been there myself. I thought he was investigating, but he was being observant. I thought you observed to investigate. And either way, it's the same. But God says, tell you, I'm also going to visit your family. And what the devil thought he could totally destroy, I'm going to repair it. And I'm going to show you that what the devil says is over. God says, I'm about to show you how to do it right. You have people's lives in your hands. It's different than these people. God's challenging you to cover a different group of people. From what I see and I'll close my eyes now, no one has been able to do it effectively yet. You will probably be the first. God said, because your heart is pure towards people, I'm going to open your gift up to the world when I'm done with you. And somebody who would scream loud for this brother... All right, let's get ready to go home and we'll sing a song in a minute. I heard you, Berlin. What's your name? Braylon what? You married? What's her name? I'm going to ask you to walk around the church. And I mean you. She can go with you if she wants to. She don't have to. Walk slow because God says, when I'm through with him, I'm going to make him close to a millionaire. Tell him, because he doesn't really ask for money, he wants enough to take care of his family. He does not ask me for money. You don't pray to God for money. When you're walking, when you start feeling God saying yes, pick up speed. When you pick up speed, God said, the quicker you move, the faster the miracle is coming. And somebody better help Braylon right now in Jesus' name. Pick up speed. Pick up speed. Hey, son, stop running. How long you been married? 15 years, you don't even look that old. Y'all have children? How many? How many? All right, you're not going to understand this, but run again because the Lord said, when you ran, tell him, if I decide to give him the money, I also decide to make the boy the, the, the heir. You need the boy. Y'all ain't...
No one dance, but I want 30 seconds left for only people who know. Bishop, I almost gave in. I ain't gonna lie. Bishop, I trust God, but my faith was getting low. But I believe that if God did it for Hannah, he can do it for me. I'm going to call your dance the Hannah. When I say do the Hannah, you got to act like you lost it. And you got 30 seconds to show God your behavior, your actions. All right. Do the Hannah. Everybody. Bow your heads, close your eyes, give me piano, give me F sharp. Hallelujah. Hold someone's hand. Don't walk. Don't do that.
for you that are not into praise are you into worship the climate just shifted oh tell me who can stand me for us how when we call on that great name of Jesus, oh Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. You got to claim it. I told Satan. Y'all stay low to tell you. Everybody, let them tell me. Say we have the victory. Come on. We have 